very slim. So this is the colonial, the early colonial frontispiece of the Codex Mendoza. Codex, so that's a European term. Mendoza is the person who owned it. It has nothing to do with who made it or you know, the indigenous people. It shows the founding of Tenochtitlan in a conceptual manner of the Mexica capital. So that's why you could put it in here, not for where it's colonial, but you can come back to it later. And I would recommend that. I would use it here as an illustration to talk about the city, and then I would use it differently at the end. Um, Huitzilopochtli, the patron guy, is the eagle sitting on the, ca on the cactus here with the prickly pears. So this is their, the animal avatar. And avatar is a good word, and they've probably seen the movie. Avatar is a really good m word. It's your, uh, you, you are that. You share consciousness with that thing, that other thing. But it's not other if you share consciousness. It's hard to talk about, but avatar is a good word. Um, so he's in his, e his e eagle form, not his anthropomorphic form. So that's shamanic. He's, he's not just someone, uh, you know, it's different from the Greek pantheon because often it's a punishment in the Greek to be the minotaur, to be turned into part bull or this or that, or, or your, sex, you know, your sexuality is out of control because you're a pan and you're part goat. They're always something dangerous and lesser and scary and weird about it rather than absolutely straightforward. It's your base <laughs> self. It's like a base self instead of your higher self. Can it, an eagle can see way further you know, than we can. So why wouldn't we want to be one of them? And what it's showing conceptually is the four parts of the city. They divided their city into four parts. And it was a gridded city. So this is different from, the, from Yashtilan. They're two different cultures. They didn't do the same things. But they did have a grid city. And the Europeans, were, at the same time, were doing grid cities. Some people argue that when they saw Cusco, which was pretty much of a grid, and Tenochtitlan, Cusco is the Inca capital, Tenochtitlan, that the, they brought back the idea or reinforced it in Europe. So it's sort of a shared idea at, that, shared at the time. I can't prove it one way or the other. The, <laughs> these guys are the the early rulers, these are all the different rulers. This is Tenosh, Tenosh Titlan, the place of Tenosh. He's the one with the dark skin and the little speech scroll. That little thing in front of him is a speech scroll. They put a little spiral coming out of their mouth to show that they're talking. The one who speaks. And that's what the name of the Inca ruler was, the one who speaks. He, he talks, he gets to say. And there's a shield with, uh, um, spears or arrows underneath, you know, the basis of the city is for war because they were expansionist and they were warlike and they were quite different. They wanted an empire unlike the Maya. So this is an empire. This is a conquering empire. This is showing people sitting on mats. Important people sit on mats and regular people sit on the ground. So that's very simple. There's an image of the skull rack just with one skull to show that it's an important part. The death that you are w waging on other people is an important part of a city, and they had a place called a skull rack with poles and skulls on them, but they also had stone versions of them. If you do more on Tenochtitlan, then you'll see the, the stone skull rack, the permanent version of it. And down below are just two scenes to, that reinforce this warlike aspect two scenes of conquest, and there's glosses. The reason you know it's not ancient is that you've got writing in Spanish and in Spanish script, Colhuacan Puebla and whatever that one is. So this writing, Tenochtitlan right there. So get them to look really closely and say, did they write like, you know, do you think they wrote that word Tenochtitlan? I mean, kids, I think, assume that Everybody writes like us, and you know that's just universal. No, this shows that this was done. It was done right after the conquest, and copying, almost certainly, mostly copying, what was there before. 
And this shows a temple falling over, a pyramid-like structure with a temple on the top. And there's smoke and fire, and it's falling over. Uh, that shows conquest. That's one way to show conquest. It's picture writing, really, pictographic, you could call it. And this little thing that looks sort of like a humped up, that's the name of the town. That's a hill with a certain pattern on it, and each one is a particular place. So this is just showing, and here's the big Mexica person with their shield in there. Uh, this is probably meant to be the club that was studded with obsidian blades. They would, it was hand-to-hand -hand combat, and they would just rip you to shreds, you know, just, just wound you and, and start the blood flowing. And then the little guy, and behind that shield, what he's doing is holding him by the hair. See how he's down like that? It's covering up. Yeah, they're being conquered. The little ones are being conquered, and the guy's holding their hair behind the shield. So he's not killing them. He's sub they're being submissive. Um, and around the edges, this is calendar, 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 uh, days in the 260-day calendar, in that ritual calendar, ritual calendar. They have pictures, like here's a little rabbit, here's a little house, here's a little flint knife. They have 20 different symbols. Uh, actually, these are the years. These are just the four that are for years. Sorry, these are only four of their symbols. And this right here, um, I don't know if I, I hope that I corrected myself. Some of the literature says this is the conquest, but it's actually the uh, end of the 52 year, if, if I said that in there or you read that, just disregard it. That's the end of a 52 years, or really the beginning of the next. It's called the new fire ceremony. So at the end of 52 years, you want to get the next cycle to go, right? And there's a little anxiety, just the way we had at 1,000 and at 2,000, Y2K. Uh, people get, and the calendars are arbitrary, <laughs> you know? It didn't mean anything, but um, that shows um, the new fire ceremony is one person is sacrificed. So here we go with this, oh, they did all this sacrifice. One person uh, gets sacrificed and they um, open up, they take out his heart, and on his sternum they s use flint and they start a new fire on his bone. And that all the fires have been put out, which is a, a really sort of risky thing to do, except you can't always start fires, but it's very symbolic. Like We're done. You know, we rely on this fire. that's civilization. That's eating. That's being warm. That's all those things. You know, they also smashed a lot of pots. They would take all their utensils and stuff and break them. So they were really just collectively trusting that the priests would start the fire up again from sacrifice, from death, which is really giving your life force. It's giving life. It's not ending. It's a gift. From giving the life of one person, you start up civilization again in time. Time keeps going and it's nice. Do you da, 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 da. I don't. No, mm -mm, it's not a punishment. It's not a punishment. It's an honor. You're the person who gets to start it over again. So the new fire ceremony, there was one in 1502. And that's what this year represents, 1502. That was during Moltecuzoma II's reign. And don't, if you read about Moltecuzoma II, they always are saying, you know, he was depressive and he was insecure and he didn't know what to do and he was hand wringing. And, you know, I mean, we don't know about his psychology, but he was an unfortunate person who had to meet true aliens. This is where aliens come in. Someone who comes who has got skin like ours, you know, we look awful. We're, we're terrifying. And at least, you know, and, and with hair on their face, like, a, like an animal, but that's good. So it was kind of like, oh, you've got all that hair on your face. And um, they smelled metal, you know, lots of metal where there wasn't as much gold. So that would be kind of like, well, where'd you get all that good metal, you know? So, 
I could give you two hours on the misunderstandings, but don't, I would say not to buy the whole Mata Kusoma just didn't know what to do. Yeah, he didn't know what to do. How would you know what to do? It's like Mars Attacks. You remember that movie? You know, oh, we come in peace. <laughs> so same basic idea, that it was truly unprecedented, but in a cyclical worldview, that is very disturbing. That's more disturbing. We're used to, you know, okay, now we've got new technology. Now we've got new, 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 new barrage. But when you think you know the world and it's supposed to just keep turning and turning and something really comes in that's unprecedented, that's why what they did was decided that uh, Cortez was a, a divinity called Quetzalcoatl, the bird snake, Quetzalcoatl. Um, and there's a whole story about a return of somebody from that same spot. And sadly enough, in the story of the return, it was supposed to be in, in the, a particular year, and that was when he landed in that spot in that year. So it was kind of like, there he is. And La Malinche said he was given some suits to try on, feather suits, and one was Quetzalcoatl, one was the rain god, and something else. And she went, the one on the left. You're supposed to be Quetzalcoatl. You're supposed to be Quetzalcoatl. <laughs>